Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How I love your law. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. How sweet are your words to my taste. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Yet so often we have despised God's word and failed to gladly hear and learn it. For this and all of our sins, we bow before God and humbly ask his forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity, but I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The scriptures testify about Jesus, who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross to pay for all of your sins, 
and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have committed to your church the task of making disciples of all nations. Enlighten with your wisdom those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, they may worship and serve you from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You may be seated. A lesson from the scripture's book of wisdom, Proverbs chapter 8, where wisdom addresses God's people. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates leading into the city, at the entrances, she cries aloud, To you, O men, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, gain understanding. Listen, for I have worthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true, for my lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just, none of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are faultless to those who have knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have understanding and power. By me, kings reign and rulers make laws that are just. By me, princes govern and all nobles who rule on earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, along the paths of justice, bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. This is the word of your Lord. We join in the hymn of the night, hymn number 512. Please notice in the bulletin who sings which stanza.
Grace and peace are yours from God, our Father, through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Class verse that you've chosen, very appropriate verse on this momentous day for you eighth grade graduates, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of our Lord. It's a very encouraging passage, because there are are going to be days ahead, frankly, when life isn't going to be going so well. And you're going to have to remember what you learned here at Trinity. In fact, I've got a good example maybe of that. I don't know how many of you plan to be opera singers. Anybody? Nope. Um, But here's an opera singer who had a, a bad day and needed some encouragement. Now, I know that's kind of funny if you're not the person who just did that. But some days you're going to have days like that. Maybe even weeks, months, years. I know you might think that, wow, I've made it to eighth grade and I'm graduating. I mean, what can go wrong for me from here on in? But but there are dangers ahead. So you need to remember what you've learned. You need to stand firm in the faith. Dangers ahead. I'm sure that many of you know about what happened, uh, what was it, 104 years ago in the North Atlantic to the Titanic. Right, the unsinkable ship. What's one thing that you know about the Titanic? That it sank. In fact, it was supposed to be one of those ships that was unsinkable. In fact, that's why a lot of people maybe didn't think about, well, some of the precautions that should have been made. The rivets that were put into the Titanic were not. It seems like they tried to cut corners with some of the craftsmanship. In fact, there were even only half of the lifeboats that were needed on that ship for that many passengers. Well, because they think They thought that it just wasn't going to sink, so why would they need the lifeboats? Why would they need enough life vests? But April 15th, 1912, 11.50 in the evening, there was a shudder that went through the Titanic as it struck an iceberg, a big iceberg. And even though The one who was steering the ship tried to maneuver around it. It was too big and there were too many gashes in the hull. Right away, the captain, Captain Smith, called up the one who had built the ship because he was on that ship, on its maiden voyage, trying to see, okay, what things can we learn that maybe we should have taken care of beforehand? Well, As he was called, he didn't even really feel it much himself, but as he went finally to where the damage was, he finally told the captain, you know, this ship could withstand four of the sections of the ship being filled with water. And there are now five of them filling up rapidly. It is a mathematical certainty that the Titanic will sink within two hours. And it did. That man, Thomas Andrews, tried to do all he could to try to save as many people as he could. He was trying to get people out of their cabins. Some of the people, of course, didn't think that there was much danger, so 
frankly, that late at night as people were knocking on the doors and trying to get them to the top deck and grab their life vests, a lot of them just said, ah, no, nope, I'm sleeping. Some of those doors had to be broken down because the people were unaware of their danger. Eventually, Mr. Andrews was seen last encouraging women and children to get into some of those lifeboats, knowing full well, in fact, that there would not be enough to save them all. Talk about a bad day. So why do I bring up these tragedies, these bad days to you? Isn't this supposed to be a happy occasion? Isn't this graduation day? Shouldn't we ta be talking about happy things and accomplishments? Yes, absolutely, that's important. But you have an enemy that is waiting for you, eighth graders, and by the way, everyone else as well, who wants you to forget all the things that you have learned here in this house of God and in this school of God. He wants you to think maybe there is no danger and so you won't be ready for when those days, those bad days come. Or maybe he wants you to do the opposite, despair so much when you face those bad days that, that frankly you despair and you just think, oh, it's all over. Why even, why even trust in God anymore? Look at all the pain and misery he's allowed into my life. Those dangerous bad days are coming. The question is, what will you do with them when they come? And that's why I love the verse that you chose for your graduation. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The Apostle Paul was talking to Christians in the city of Corinth. This is the great resurrection chapter. And some of them were, were kind of despairing of their faith. They had heard all the things that the Apostle Paul had taught them and, and the other teachers of the word that, that they had been taught as well. And, and yet they were starting to doubt. They were starting to doubt whether, frankly, there was even a resurrection from the dead, especially as they maybe saw some of their loved ones die. They had questions. And sometimes they maybe thought that, that God wasn't answering those questions. And so the Apostle Paul turned them back to the Scriptures, actually turned them back to what he had already taught them, the things that they knew. That's exactly what you need to remember as well when you face those difficult days, those days of doubt, even of dread. Paul talked about this. He wanted them to hold firmly to the gospel message because he had preached that to them upon pain of death. He wanted them to know that everything that was written about Jesus in the scriptures had been fulfilled. And specifically, he says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that not only he, but hundreds of people had seen him raised from the dead, alive after having been very dead. So what does that all mean? Well, he brings those Christians in Corinth to a very terrible place of despair, a bad day like no other. Suppose that Jesus hadn't been raised. Well, that would mean that he hadn't kept his promise to rise from the grave. At the very least, it would bring to doubt, frankly, whether... God accepted his sacrifice or not? Was his work finished? Wait a minute, how could he even be the Christ if he didn't fulfill his promise? That would mean he lied and that he's not perfect and can he even be our savior then? And that's exactly what Paul said. He said, if Christ has not been raised, our faith is futile, we are still in our sins. Our condemnation 
is assured. Talk about a bad day. So what will you do when you face those bad days that will come? When the devil either wants you to have such clear sailing that you really don't need God or your life is so bad, tragedy after tragedy, that you think he can't love me at all. That's when you go back to what you learned here. That's when you go back to the resurrected Christ. To understand what it means that you don't have to have any doubts about who he is. That when you fail, and you will, just like that opera singer, that there is still forgiveness for you. I'm not talking about messing up in an opera. I'm talking about in life. When you make terrible choices. When you go away from the Lord. And when you wonder, is it possible that I could even be forgiven for that sin? And that's, of course, when God reminds us that he's paid for every sin. Christ died, according to the scriptures. He was buried. And he was raised again. All according to scripture. That means that not only does he love us, but because he rose according to his promise, everything else that he's said will come true as well that he's with us every single day of our lives to the very end of the age, that when we fail in our lives of serving him as his dear children, that his blood that he shed on the cross pays for all of those failures. And that simply through faith in Jesus, we have Jesus' righteousness covering us. Wow, what a difference that makes in a Christian's life. Are you going to face difficulties and dangers ahead? Oh yeah, and the devil's right there waiting for you to slip and fall and despair and give up. What do you do when those bad days come? Let's hear that first clip one more time. Bad days, bad days. When you fail, what will you do? Focus on your failure? Focus on you? Or will you focus on the one who paid for your failure? Who gave you his righteousness? And who gave you the strength to live in this world a life pleasing to him? You know what's amazing about being a child of God, that he actually wants us to work in his kingdom and do amazing things, including spreading his gospel to those who desperately need it. You mean schmucks like us? With all kinds of failures and sins, how could he choose us? Because he loves us. It's as simple as that. And he doesn't want us to fail. Schmucks though we are. He wants us to have good days in his kingdom as we live for him. I want you to see another video, another opera video. I don't know why I'm on opera today, but you all love opera, right? Okay, let's see maybe how a good day might go in the kingdom. But for the next contestant, the world of showbiz seems a million miles away. It's Paul, a mobile phone salesman from South Wales. By day, I sell mobile phones. My dream is to spend my life doing what I feel that I was born to do. Paul, what are you here for today, Paul? To sing opera. 
I've always wanted to sing as a career. Confidence is, has always been sort of like a difficult thing for me. I've always found it a little bit difficult to be completely confident in myself. Okay. Ready when you are. Paul Potts, that's his name. Even his name seems like, boy, he's not going to do well. What do you guys think? How well are you going to do? Next phase of your life? High school? Kind of daunting? Satan's out there waiting for you? Pretty scary? Well, that's right. But Jesus is with you. He saved you. He rose from the dead to assure you of that. He will never let you out of his hand. So listen to these words that Paul also says. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. What a beautiful passage that you chose for your service today. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. God's blessings as you continue in your lives of service to the Lord who so fully served you. Amen. In response to the sermon, let's uh, sing the responsive hymn.
Wow, guys, this is it, our eighth grade graduation. We've had some really great memories here. I can't believe it's over. Although we may be ready for high school, I feel like we should look back on all the great memories from our past years. So let's start in kindergarten. We weren't actually in the same class. We had morning and afternoon kindergarten, which meant half a day of school instead of a full day, which was pretty awesome. That was definitely not the best part of kindergarten, though. The best part was Fun Friday. We had Fun Friday once a month. Mrs. Eggert planned some really great activities for us. One of my favorite activities was the spaghetti wall. Mrs. Eggert told us not to get it on the ceiling, but that was tricky. I, rem I know that Michael and Dylan always got it on the ceiling and always got in trouble. Another fun activity was bobbing for apples. Because we were so small, a couple of us would fall over into the bucket at Michael Bina. <laughs> I remember that Mrs. Eggert would always confuse Maddie and I because we looked so alike. So sometimes Maddie was Savannah and Savannah was Maddie. The day before St. Patty's Day, we made absolutely magnificent leprechaun traps with the four gr fourth graders. They turned out really impressive, but we didn't catch any leprechauns. However, they did leave us some tasty treats. And then first grade rolled around. We finally started going to school for a whole day. Mrs. Zelmer was really enjoyable to have for a teacher. We got to make a really cool book about ourselves, and there were these large yellow sticky sheets of paper that we used to put all over the classroom. For all of you who are thinking, they were just sticky notes, what's the big deal about them? No, they were eight and a half by 11, full-sized sheets of paper that just happened to be yellow and sticky. We also got to make gingerbread houses out of milk cartons. They turned out a little messy, but yet again, we were only in first grade. They were so fun to make, and I'm pretty sure that I still have mine. When it was winter time, when it was winter time, we finally got to go on the big snow hill outside. That was one of the best parts of our first through fourth grade years. We made so many snow forts, and we even made holes into the hill that one or two people could fit in at a time. Second grade was one of the best years. I remember that Michael Bina would always sidetrack Mrs. T. She would end up telling us some of her greatest life stories, which were pretty amazing and would take us out of a lot of class time. Bryson and Michael had the biggest crush on Caitlin. They were both obsessed with her. <laughs> it dates all the way back to daycare where they would actually fight over who would marry her first. <laughs> In third grade, we had Mrs. Jenkins as a teacher. She may have been strict with us, but she definitely prepared us for the upper grades, and looking back, she was a pretty great teacher. We did a lot of read aloud, and Maddie's grandma would come in and help with arts and crafts. She helped us make a really cool Mother's Day gift that our moms really enjoyed. Mrs. Brown was the greatest fourth grade teacher. Every week, we would take a spelling test, and if we had five perfect tests, she would give us an ice cream sundae from McDonald's. She motivated us so much and was an amazing teacher. We occasionally got Starburst and she would always have us say please and thank you. I think we learned our manners very well after having Mrs. Brown. We also got cookies if we had the best row for the week and we went to the Capitol in Madison for a field trip in which we saw a lot of protesters. Fourth grade went by so fast. Soon enough, we were on to fifth grade with Mrs. Rydecki. She liked to call us the Biggins, which didn't make us feel all that big, but we were in the upper grades, so that meant we were no longer the little tykes. We did so many jumping jacks every morning, which got pretty exhausting, but we still had a ton of fun. Don't tell her, but sometimes we would cheat and not do all our jumping jacks. Shh. On Fridays, we did weird but fun dances, and we had a crazy hat day, and everyone wore a crazy hat. Towards the end of our fifth grade year, we had a huge water balloon fight. There were so many water balloons that by the time they were all gone, everyone was soaking wet. We were finally on to sixth grade with Mrs. Pearson. We did so much this year. 
we got Chromebooks, we got to Skype with other schools, and we got to watch the Aquabats, which was this really ridiculous show that she would occasionally put on for us. One of the episodes had a song that was called Burgerain. Don't look it up because once you do, it will be stuck in your head for years. At the end of the year, we went to Frame Park for a picnic. We, after we ate, we took all the water bottles and were dumping them all over each other. We were running all over the place trying not to get wet. Those are some memories I don't want to forget. We had a lot of fun in seventh grade. One time, we blew up a ton of balloons for a prank. We wrote all over, the, all over the balloons little phrases, and we gave them all to Mrs. Rydecki. We did so many pranks this year. On April Fool's Day, Mr. Rydecki and Mr. Ganey were pr pulling pranks on each other all day. That was a lot of fun, and it was really entertaining to watch. That year, we had the wonderful, quirky teacher, Miss Geffert. She was so delightful, and I think we all truly miss not having her as a teacher this year. Eighth grade. We made it, guys. We shared so many memories this year. Good and bad, big and small. I'm so glad that I got to share all these memories with all of you. I don't think that we'll forget all the crazy life stories that Mr. Ganey has told us. One of the best stories was when he was at the gas station and he would eat all of the donuts. When, while he was speaking in class, and when we would raise our hand, he would always do this thing. <laughs> oh, and let's not forget all the fun political talk that went on a little bit too long. Thanks, Andrew, Lucas, and Elliot for that. I don't think that we could forget about Mr. Goot. Shout out to him and subscribe to his YouTube channel. We also had Miss Siles this year. She's pretty cool and is a pretty great teacher. I think we should remember Elliot's spontaneous voice cracks and Lucas's sudden outburst of singing. Sometimes it's the little things that you remember the most. This past year has gone by so fast. These memories have been great, but I think it's time to make some new ones. Thank you all for making our grade school years enjoyable. I'll miss all of you so much. I'm hungry, so I'm gonna make this as quick as I can. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like Savannah just said in the, oh no, I can't believe she remembered that spe speech, we are done. Guys, it's been a long road, but it went by fast. All these memories behind us, gone but not forgotten. Now we must look forward to what lies ahead. And I look forward, literally, and see many sad faces that this is over, but eager faces that are ready to begin the next chapter in their lives. Tomorrow, we will no longer be students of Trinity. This is just one amazing accomplishment we are moving through in our lives right now. A few of us, a couple weeks ago, were confirmed. For others, <coughs> Nate and I, were confirmed last Sunday. This is just one huge stepping stone in our walk of faith. Other accomplishments in our lives will be graduating high school, college, and then hopefully marriage. <laughs> 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 Through all of these things, as Mrs. Brown would always say, F-R-O-G, fully rely on God. The only way that we will make it through these things is to hold on to our faith and rely on God to get us through it. You thought our road here at Trinity was long. How about the narrow road on our race of faith? Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. But the thing is, we aren't done with our race of faith when we leave tonight. We still have many milestones to hit in our lives here on earth. But throughout our lives, we need to rely on our faith to get us to the finish line. We have been taught daily here at Trinity that Christ is our Savior, and he will always be here with us. We have also been taught how to live as Christians and glorify God in all we do. Trinity has been a safe place to grow both academically and spiritually. It may not seem like it now, but as we go into high school, 
but as we go into <laughs> But as we go into high school, we need to apply what we have learned here at Trinity to deal with life's temptations and struggles. In life's ups and downs, we can look at what God tells us in Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For I, the Lord your God, am with you wherever you go. He says right there, do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid. For he is with us wherever we go. Some of us will be going to north. He will be with us there. Some of us will go to South. He's going to be with us there. And some of us, of course, will go to Wisco. He's going to be with us there. Regardless of where we are in life, Satan will be tempting us. But God promises to be with us at all times. That is so important for us to remember. God is with us at all times. We need to go to him in prayer and hold tight to our faith in him. Guys, if I've learned anything this year, it's that God put all of us in each other's lives for one reason or another, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Before we part ways today, say our final goodbyes, shed the first of many tears, I want to leave you with one final thought, a poem by Mary Stevenson. It references the idea that God is by our side in everything we do, even at our lowest points. One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, You'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. I would like to I would like to take this opportunity to say a couple words of thanks. First of all, I want to thank the members of of this congregation. Whether you realize it or not, this congregation invests a lot of money in your sons and daughters each year. They invest prayers for the school and towards the school. And I want to thank the members of, of Trinity very much. Also, I want to thank you, the parents of our graduates. Thank you very much for the privilege that you have given the faculty and I of sharing your sons and daughters. It has truly been a, a privilege. I know I've been, I've been around here for four years and I have felt extremely blessed that I have been able to rub shoulders with your sons and daughters these four years. Thank you very much for that. Each year, the, our president acknowledges students across the country who put forth an effort and show, and show an outstanding example to four students across the United States. This year is no different. President Obama has en enclosed a copy of a, a letter that he has written to these award winners. There are two sets of awards given out each year. One is called the Educational Achievement Award. This is for 
students that show that receive high scores they show a lot of internal motivation both in the classroom and outside of the classroom this year i'm very happy to uh grant these individuals uh this award they will receive this with their diploma nate borkwart andrew bussey hayden faulkner maddie knipple josh ranke and Lucas Stray. There's also another award that the president gives out, and it's called the Educational Excellence Award. These are for students whose standardized tests are outstanding standardized tests. They hold to a high academic standard. In fact, all of the individuals that are given this award this year have maintained a 3.9 average or above in this and they also show outstanding characteristics in the area of leadership these individuals will receive this award that Regan Carter Savannah Fisher Bryson Kirsch Caitlin Lobbs Shelby Plate and Evan Visacco. It is my privilege, along with Board of Education Chairman Privilege, Matt Reinke, to grant you, the graduates of 2016, your diplomas at this time. So we would ask you to come forward and receive them. Borgward. Andrew Bussey. Regan Carter. Noah Eggert. Hayden Faulkner. Savannah Fisher. Marlia Hilger. Alexandra Howell. Sarah Jaruszewski. Milana Kasten. Bryson Kirsch. Madeline Knippel. Caitlin Labs. Elliot Lambrecht. Serena Martinez. Natalie Olson. Dylan Aradnik. Shelby Plate. Shelby. 
Leah Rausch. Lauren Rain. Joshua Reinke. Lucas Stray. Evan Basako.
Each year, we, God has blessed us with a gifted group of eighth graders, and this year is no excess, exception. I no longer call you eighth graders, I call you graduates, but when I look at you, he has truly, truly blessed you with a lot of gifts. Not the same gifts, but a lot of gifts. As you witnessed, a lot of our students are very gifted academically. Some of our students are gifted speakers, as you just heard not too long ago. But we have gifted athletes in this class. We have those people who are, have gifts in speaking. We have those who have gifts in being friendly to everybody. But God has blessed you all very much. My prayer for you, eighth graders, is that you continue to let your light shine, blossom those gifts that God has given you as you go on into high school. At this time, I would like to call forward two of our faculty members who will be leaving this year. If, uh, if Sarah Borkwart and Christine Alhoffen could come forward, please. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Reinke. I'm the chairman of the Board of Education. I want to take a moment. First of all, we're here to recognize these two wonderful teachers. But before we do that, I would like to thank the rest of the faculty and staff that support Trinity Lutheran and help all these children. If you would please all rise, we'd like to give you a hand. All teachers and faculty and staff, please stand up. That includes pastors. Pastor Borkwart, you're still one of those. Thank you. So nothing could happen here without their time, their dedication, and think of all the things they do that they're not asked to do. We appreciate that. Now. For the two that are leaving us, can you believe that? <laughs> but seriously, I think um, every, every year, every other year, we have some, some changes. There's changes in life all the time. One of the things that I feel that is very important to understand is if you talk uh, about Mrs. Ailhoffen or Mrs. Borkwart, they dedicate their time in many different ways. Um, Mrs. Ailhoffen, think of it, she teaches algebra, math, She's here for an hour, hour and a half a day, every day, to help with math. Think of your schedule if you had to carve out just that little bit of time to teach. And how many years have you done that now? Five? It seems like longer. But anyway, I'm just kidding. But no, it's been tremendous having you here. And so we just wanted to say thank you so much for all the things that you've done and all the kids that you've affected every day. And it's for, from the Board of Education, we would like to give you this card, as well as one of those wonderful plants. You don't have to carry it with you at the moment, but come after the service. Thank you so much for your time and dedication. And then also, Mrs. Borkwart. Uh, we say so much about her because she started just teaching extended learning. And then she did so many other things, math, even English, and things that she just picked up. And she was that utility infielder that would always help fill a gap, but she didn't fill a gap. She was an all-star as she did it. And we are so thankful for the time and dedication that you had as well. And the Board of Education wants to thank you as well. And then this would be your plant. So to you, thank you so much from the Board of Education and thank you to all the teachers and the staff to make this all happen. Thank you.
I just want to say a couple things. Yet, I, I've been very privileged uh, to serve with these two ladies. They've been a, a, a great example to our students on hard work, on compassion. But I want to tell both of you, your servant attitude has been a great example to the faculty. And, and maybe, excuse me, and maybe that's what we're going to miss my, the most about you two is your servant attitude. The students have a gift for you, too. If uh, the students would come forward and give, give the gift from them. Each of you receive a cross with students' names on the back of the cross. Thank you very much for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you. Just a couple other quick announcements before we close the service. You can greet uh, the, the graduates in a reception line downstairs in the fellowship hall uh, after the service. And then after the last song, uh, please allow the students and the graduates to exit before you exit. Thank you very much. Please stand for prayer. As we close our school year, let us come before our Father in heaven to ask his blessing and to offer our thanks. Father, you have brought us to the end of the school year by your grace. Lead us now to gratefully acknowledge the blessings you have given us in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you, Father, for Christian teachers, parents, and peers who have served us for our good and blessing. May their efforts bear fruit in lives that continue to grow in faith, hope, and love of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, as we part for a time or go on to new stages of life, keep us safe in your protecting care. Refresh us through leisure and rest. Renew us in the desire to grow in all useful knowledge and in the wisdom that comes from you. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commend all that we have and are, asking for your blessing for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit, and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.